I have been joined, uh, my guests are here, Joyce Bawa Mukhtari, uh, who is a special aide to the former President Mahama, is seated on my right. Good morning to you. Good morning, David. You're welcome. Thank you. Good uh, morning. And uh, I have over on my left, Akusia Menu, who is a member of the government communication team. Akusia, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. Day. Fantastic. Well, it's good to have you both here. I hope the morning has been treating you right so far. Very well, thank you. Okay. It's been great so far. Thanks to both. Fantastic. Well, let's begin. Um, the first topic we want to discuss is the issue of um, the special prosecutor, uh, Martin Amidou. The challenges that he's been facing, he's been coming out into the, the public to make certain comments about the challenges that he's been going through and so on. We want, we want to delve into this issue a little bit and find out, is he justified in the claims that he's making? Um, should he not have achieved a lot more than he already has and so on and so forth? So let me start with um, Akusia Meno uh, on this subject. Good morning to you, lovely viewers. Um, Office of the Special Prosecutor, yes. Martin Amidu. Yes. I must say, it's, it's been a, a number of issues with him since he's been appointed. I remember the first um, issue concerned resources, mm. which is no longer an issue. There was a matter of an ally, there was a matter of his office building. He's been allocated 180 million Ghana cities. There's no institution with operational challenges. Without operational. Without operational challenges. It, it's up to you to find a way to make it work for you. Um, people have cited, um, you know, a bit of lethargy between coordinating affairs between heads of institutions and himself. But mm. I'll just say that he needs to get on top of it. Um, we are counting on him to bring a lot of people to book. And he just needs to do his job. That's, that's basically it on the matter. Yeah, but um, basically what, what um, he said is that he goes to institutions and he, he only gets rebuffed. Every time he tries to find information, people are dodging him, people are uh, refusing to give him the you know, necessary help and, and documents and so on and so forth, that he needs to make progress um, with, 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 with the prosecution. The, so. w the, I find it a bit hard not to believe, but to, to, to accept the fact that he, he's having challenges. Challenges will come. Has he addressed all the, all the avenues available to him to make sure these people give him the information required? Well, now he's threatening to, to sue some people. He sh then he should go ahead. I mean, if he has to sue to get information, he, he has to do that. I, I don't see how that should be an issue for mm. us to worry our heads over. Mm. If he needs to get his job done and people are st stepping in his way or people are um, causing problems for him, he needs to do what is, what is available to him mm. within the, you know, within the law or legal space yeah. to make sure he gets his work done. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not going to make any excuses for him. Mm. I mean, people, people are a bit tired with the back and forth, and there's a lot to be done. Is it time to consider a new person, maybe? Oh, th let's, not, let's not jump the gun. He's, he was giving his resources. I don't think it's even been a year. So let's just give him some time to, not to settle, but to, mm. to crack the whip where, wherever it needs to mm. be done. Joyce, <laughs> what are your, what's your assessment of um, Amidi's work so far? Um, and is he justified? Is it, are, his, are his concerns legitimate? Well, thank you very much, David, and good morning to Abna and uh, all your viewers out there. Well, you know, sometimes I'm constrained to discuss matters to do with the Office of the Special Prosecutor, particularly the prosecutor himself. Being a lawyer myself, sometimes I can't understand and appreciate the challenges that will be associated naturally with any officer of the law or the court who tries to undertake or carry out investigations of any sort, really. Mm -hmm. I actually was one of those who was quite ambivalent about the appointment in the first place. Mm -hmm. Martin Amidou is one of our very senior most solicitors an Attorney General and Deputy Attorney General for many, many years. Yes. One of those really fine minds that we can possibly think about. But I do think also that the politics of his appointment maybe may have been one of his key challenges, may have been his Achilles heel right from the word go. 
And I believe that sometimes in your own pronouncements, you'd find that you'd actually be digging holes for yourself as the future faces you. Mm. I am sure that maybe if the opprobrium or all the noise had not been associated at the time with his appointment, he just may have been a touch more successful. I am sure that he may have some challenges. I have never been to the office of the special prosecutor, save the fact that an act of parliament establishes that office. Mm. And indeed, it was actually touted as an office that was being created to help government yeah. in its fight against corruption. Yeah. Question we should be asking is that two and a half years later, have we won the battle against corruption? Mm. I saw the CDD's report last week about the loss of well over 800 million in the government's budget. Yeah. I have actually heard Ghana Integrity Initiative speak largely about the corruption index and perception of corruption as having deepened over the period. Mm. So questions you should be asking is whether or not the Office of Special Prosecutor, celebrated as it was at the time of its inception, has achieved in any way what it was set up to do. Mm. If after two years or three years, basically, the Special Prosecutor comes out to speak publicly about his own personal challenges regarding his work and how to go about his work, mm. I do think that they have a level of investigations that they would have to carry out. I believe that they would need also to carry out some checks and balances for themselves. Mm. I do think that they would need also a certain number of officers to be able to undertake this exercise. I would be amazed if I am able to sit here and try and figure out what challenges the office itself may be experiencing in anticipation of this work. Mm. But I would like to caution that in future, when we make these appointments, if you want the office to be seen as fair-minded, as broad-minded, as guided by the tenets of the Constitution, then we should do well to avoid the politics and politics that accompanies these appointments. Mm. I don't want to reduce this debate about the office to a question about the two political parties or our leanings for that matter. I have always known the Honorable Martin Amidu as an astute lawyer, a fine gentleman, a very objective individual mm. who had taken a certain personal perspective as his way of contributing to society yeah. and at least helping us ameliorate largely mm. our fight against corruption. Mm. If I were in government shoes at the time, I would possibly have allowed this gentleman to continue to carry out that social watchdog role that he had assumed for himself mm. at his age, at his level, and with his experience. But to set a hitherto private watchdog to now watch over operatives in government, that was always going to set the tone for serious, serious conflict. But you so don't I will not want to guess yeah. what exactly his challenges are. Okay, so, but you but don't... I believe that the tone was set. No, but I mean, he's, he's actually point. mentioned some of his challenges or, or anyway. But then well, the question I want to ask you is that wasn't that... Um, a right move by the president, as it were, to pick a special prosecutor who wasn't, who wouldn't be seen as one of his own, and therefore having a vendetta necessarily to, you know, an, an axe to grind um, with 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 members of the of the opposition. Um, don't you think that was rather, you know, a smart move, or do you think because you're you're saying that it gave it a political color? I, I'm asking myself, well. This decision could not possibly be further from the truth. I totally disagree with you, and I'm sure if you open your I would phone like lines, to, I would like to any hear Ghanaians would do likewise. Why, why do you think it, it, I, give, it rather gave it a political why color? Why not? If you have a senior member of the largest opposition party, yes. one time running mate to the president yes. of Ghana, yes. who you decide that because he has always been on the peripherals, mm. has had challenges with his own party, Okay. It's pretty much like PCRP of Fourier and then President Kufo at the time. Okay. And then we come into government and decide to make PCRP of Fourier the mouthpiece of our corruption in such an official capacity. Mm. Remember that those in government today don't want to be embarrassed. They don't want to be hit with the same sticks that we were hit in office. Okay. They would definitely not be opening their arms widely to receive an investigator of this kind. And note that even the office of the Attorney General which has a singular responsibility long before the establishment of the OSP. Mm -hmm. They have always had challenges too. 
even the police that you were discussing earlier. Yes, yes. It is never easy. But I would have thought that. I would it have is thought never that. Easy. I would have thought that if the president wants to show that I'm willing for my own people to be investigated without um, preference or or you know uh, the the typical coddling that comes with you know familiarity and we are all of the same extract and so on and so forth it, in order to do that it was a good decision to put somebody who is not one of his own are you then announcing to the whole world mm. that when you want to establish neutrality mm. you go to your critics of your opponent well how does that serve as a deal with well, neutrality? well well you see that's one way of exactly. looking at it but no, the other way the other way of looking at it is to say that not going to my critics <laughs> but rather to to be seen as being fair-minded. I totally, I totally disagree. Really? When you have 123 <laughs> government appointees, yes. none of whom comes to, not the largest opposition party, not from any of the smaller political parties, mm -hmm. I think your biases and prejudices are clear. Okay. But when you decide to set up an anti-corruption agent, mm. private anti-corruption agent, okay. as the main figure of your fight against corruption, that calls for enormous debate, and I believe that the jury is out there. Agusia, what are your thoughts on what Joyce is, is, is suggesting? No, the, the takeaway from her submission was, for me is that she did agree that Martin Ambidu is fair. He's one of the um, sharpest legal brains we have in this country. He's actually an asset to this country. Let's not forget the circumstances around which Martin Ambidu lost his job in the previous administration. Mm. He brought issues of corruption in which people within the administration were found complicit and he was shown the door. Now, when you say that he was brought in to, um, as a check on appointees in government, it's mm. fact because he's devoid of bias, he has no preferences, he's not an MPP card bearing member, he's not somebody you say has certain leanings and would, be, um, um, would favor setting people. She quite agreed that he was fair. Based on his fairness, he was appointed. He's had challenges. He, he, he's listed a litany of issues out of which we've tried to um, solve all his problems. Everything he's experiencing now is something that he can actually solve. Mm. The question is, is he willing to do that and um, do it in a timely manner so that Ghanaians will not sit back like, we're, like my um, older sister is doing here and saying that, you know what, it's, it's, it's amounted to nothing. That's, the onus lies on him. The president has done his part, he's equipped me, he's equipped him, he's told him with everything that he needs to carry out his job. He just needs to do it. Any final thoughts on this? Well, I think that we simplify the argument too much. I think that anybody, if the president choose, yeah. who chooses to appoint a special prosecutor, I think he should be choosing someone with very little of an axe to grind. I think that the reasons why Martin Amidu left government are a matter of public record. Mm. He had a fallen out with his president, and the president asked him to resign. I don't think that the matter is a subject matter for debate. We shouldn't even be recycling the wheel. Mm. The Supreme Court records are there, the Attorney General's records are there, and I'm sure you've heard about the judgment debt that was paid to him yes. because he resigned. So it is not in doubt. And I think today, my big sister Otiko Jabba was sacked by Nanado. She was a member of government who campaigned heavily for them to win power. Mm. So we will sit here 10 years later and have Otiko appointed as a special prosecutor and then come and sit here and simplistically <laughs> say that he is someone who please, you know. I don't want to reduce it to, I mean, considering my level of experience, I don't want to make it a very simplistic okay. argument. I want to look at it from the perspective that I believe that most objective people will be looking at it for. And I don't want to even believe what his challenges are we know the Honorable Martin Amidu. His matters are a matter of public record in the public domain. Yeah. We don't have to sit here and debate whether or not he was the right choice or not. If okay. you pick up somebody who was an axe to grind, you do know that your own people are not in any way going to allow him to generate similar conflict or needless attention. It's a fact of life. All right. Let's uh, um, push the agenda forward. Let's talk about um, Gregory Afoko. Uh, Gregory Afoko has... Um, been denied bail. Um, the, 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 the interesting in press 
coverage of this is that, and I, and I, and I would like your your perspective on this because of your legal um, uh, background. Um, one high court says granting bail. He meets bail conditions. IGP, CID say we will not release him, and they, they've held him. They held him since March. And another high court now says he will not be granted bail. I understand that there are differences in those decisions that were made. It's not necessarily one high court overruling another high court. It's not necessarily one high court rescinding the decision of another high court. Explain to us what, what the issue is here. Well, David, thank you very much. I mean, under normal circumstances, I'll be expecting that the government's representative would actually be responding to government's own omissions and fallouts. But be that as it may, considering that I may have a certain knowledge about the law, I have tried very hard to follow this matter. I believe we all know why Gregory Apoku was arrested in the first place, mm. that there was a crime of a, a charge of murder at the time, that this case has traveled well over three years now. Mm. What my understanding is, and what I've actually read from the public discussion, has been that an application for bail was made to a high court. Mm. The conditions for bail were set. Okay. And uh, to all intents and purposes, he was supposed to be granted bail at the time. Mm. Then the Attorney General suddenly resurfaced. What we were all expecting as students of the law was that normally you'd go to the same court and make this application. Yes. So yes, they went to the same court. Mm. But the application again, the motion against the grant of bail was denied by that high court. That's mm. the court of first instance. Mm. They then went to a second court, denied the application again, and then they went to the court of appeal. Mm. I have never heard something more in Congress. I am not the Attorney General. I don't even want to presume that I know what their reasons are. I believe that in every case, there's the animus, and of course there's a rectus. Which are in which are basically the, that there must language. be the intention okay. to commit a crime, mm. the crime must have been committed. You would also then have to lead evidence mm. or adduce evidence to prove to the best and beyond a reasonable doubt mm. that considering the evidence that you have adduced, yeah. this person must have been the only person likely mm. to have committed this crime. Mm. Okay. In all of the conversations we've had, so far, government has proven very little, or probably has, has actually not even led any evidence, either connecting Gregory Afoko to the matters, or even showing to anybody mm. that indeed he is the person that they believe that he is. The court therefore decided that since this matter had taken so long, the gentleman continues to be incarcerated, but we keep asking for the case to be opened, and yeah. nothing is being done. We will therefore see no reason why bail should not be granted. Naturally, his lawyers would be pushing for their for client to be granted bail, yeah. pending any other further particulars or directions mm. from the court. You know, when we have purveyors, when we have advocates, persons who prior to coming into government alluded to largely their own characteristics as being advocates for the rule of law, the law must be seen to be working. The law must work for every individual who is Ghanaian. Mm. When you look at the preamble to the 1992 constitution, it guarantees freedom to all citizens, irrespective of creed, of faith, of religion. On this occasion, it is not just us, because I don't want government coming to say that, oh, we're being political, we're not being objective. Kegia Foucault, in any way, is not a criminal at the pleasure of the NDC. Mm. He is not a criminal who committed a crime that in any way affected an NDC individual. This is a Ghanaian citizen who's been accused on a charge of murder yeah. that government has failed to prove. Even if it was just after three months, it would be a challenge. It has been almost two years. The poor guy remains behind bars. Now the court has even admitted him to bail, set the conditions of bail which have been met, yeah. and he's still being held against his will and against the will of even the court. And the extent the Attorney General has gone to, to continue to keep him incarcerated, itself leaves a lot to be desired. 
You know, let's not forget that when we set negative precedents, they would continue to live with us. Next time, it could be one of us. It could be someone very close to either one of us. Mm. You know that even when you are admitted on a charge of murder, murder can even be easily translated into manslaughter. Okay. And in crimes of manslaughter, you are admitted to bail. Even on a charge, a higher charge of murder, there are defenses such as diminished responsibility, such as a loss of something. And, and, those, and those are bailable offenses? All of them, okay. except for the charge of murder. Mm. But this case has traveled to an extent where a judge has now realized that you are unable to furnish this court with the requisite evidence. Mm. What do we then have to do? Unless he's a flight risk, mm. but that has not even come up for discussion. They have not gone to any court to work. To, I'm sure by now even his travel documents are in the custody of the police. Because normally with such investigations, you would, you would deposit things, yeah. your passport, etc. I am sure that he has sureties who have guaranteed to present him in court. Normally the bail bond would be very high. So whoever posts that bail bond could also be at risk mm. of not just losing money, but even could be held in contempt yeah. if you fail to produce the prisoner. Yeah. So there are several checks and balances that the law has put in place to ensure that there is redress at every given stage. Mm. Why not allow the High Court to continue to proceed with the matter as has been the case? Mm. Unless you are judging the High Court as incompetent to deal with that matter. Unless you have adduced evidence to show why such an individual should not be admitted or granted bail. Mm. None of these things have come up for discussion. Mm. And to even depend to an extent on a certain level of some generation of a public debate. I have seen a statement that was issued by either to a government pseudo uh, civil society organization, Occupy Ghana, led by key fantastic lawyers who are asking for a full investigation. Maybe eventually that investigation would actually allow for this gentleman to be granted bail. Mm. You know, in every crime, there is an act of it. There is also the commission. There are various ingredients that go into proving that an individual has committed a crime or has not. Yeah. I would want to call on government that when it comes to matters of the law, let's stop trying too hard to push matters that probably are within the purview of any competent court to handle. Mm. Because then it creates the wrong impression. Okay. It shows a clear, heavy handling, influence. And of course, it also sets judges up against the public. Mm. Because if we start to worry that we will not get justice, then what will we be looking forward to? I think that this is a matter that has taken the wrong turn. I think the High Court, having granted bail and set the conditions, once they were met, the gentleman should have been granted bail. If government has any, he could even have been rearrested. There are many other ways that government could at least. We've had the Attorney General enter a Nolly Prosecco mm. in the matter of the Delta Forces yes. in the Ashanti region. Yes. That was a heinous crime. We've had same done in Accra on mm. other matters. Yeah. Even recently, some charges have been withdrawn. Mm. Even the OSP has perfect charges against the Honorable Maria Mayarga mm. and has recently gone to court to withdraw them and file fresh charges. Yeah. The law is not an ass. Okay. The law has a way of correcting itself even mm. at every key stage. All right. And I think that the Attorney General mm -hmm. or government or whoever has a deep interest in this matter yeah. should allow we, the matter to travel. Is we need to take a short break. We'll be, we'll be back and we can continue. All right. So keep watching. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back. Um, just before the break, uh, Joyce McTary was making some final comments. I would just like you to finish, and then we'll continue with Akusia. Yes. Well, I was just going to conclude by saying that, like every other Ghanaian citizen, Gregory Foko has rights too. Mm. I think that this is what we must all remember. Let's ensure that his rights, like everybody else's, are preserved and are respected. Let the court do its work. All right, Akusia, your thoughts on the saga, Afoko saga? The Gregory Afoko saga. Mm. Um, um, a bit, this matter, this case, okay, first of all, is a murder case. The accused allegedly threw acid on his victim, mm. who subsequently died from the injuries. He had an accomplice, okay, as stated by the victim before his passing. He was arrested in 2015. And I don't think he was granted bail. 
the Attorney General at the time, um, Madame Mukhtari would recall, didn't deem it fit to, for him to be granted bail. In fact, the law actually says for murder cases, you're not granted bail. Yes. That's, that's my layman's yes. knowledge of it. Yes. Now, subsequently, a lot of things have come to light in this case. His, his, um, his attorneys, I, I recall, filed what we call a habeas corpus, which literally means, for those of us yet to go to law school, I have to find out the meaning, means um, present the Pro body, produce, produce the body, the body yeah. for which the um, CID boards and the, um, and the IGP were actually filed for contempt because it, it, it was presented as if he was missing. Mm. He said he's been in our custody. He's always been with us. Now, the AG, the Attorney General, is within his rights to decide to file for a nolly prosecutor, which is basically discontinuation of the case, mm -hmm. based on certain information she might have, um, based on um, new evidence produced. There, it's, uh, I find it a bit too simplistic how my elder sister summed the whole thing up. He had an accomplice who, within the time, um, actually escaped. For two years, he was on, on a, there, were, on there was run. a manhunt for him. They yeah. actually found him in Togo. When the AG filed the Noli Prosequi, that is discontinuation of the case and putting everything down and actually moving it to another court, his lawyers said no, and then they sent it actually to Supreme Court. Okay. And the Supreme Court didn't grant them um, their request. Again, and I'm, I'm yet to see in the history of any legal process in Ghana, an attorney general going to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court um, 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 with this um, Noli Prosequi issue and then the um, um, Supreme Court overturning that. It's never happened unless, I mean, there's some example for that. But it, it, it's, it's not unheard of for a case going a certain way, mm. giving the facts presented to the attorney general to decide to re regroup and then present it again. Okay. Now, the, it's going to another court. It's going to a trial judge who is devoid of bias, fair, is going to listen to the case afresh, start from scratch, whatever it is. You are presenting it to a new court. Naturally, what would people do? You would apply for bail again. Yes. Now, the judge says, made a case. The, um, the, the name of the accomplice fails me, mm. but Gregory Afoku's accomplice, he's, he's, he's escaped before. So there's a flight risk, there's a high chance that they might, you know, go somewhere. Yeah. I'm not going to grant them bail. Mm. I'm going to hear the case afresh. When we position ourselves to make it look like the champions of fairness and honesty and Ghanaians are well within their rights, Really and truly, yes, but are they going to due process? What really bothers me, and yesterday when this issue came up, several lawyers, and as we sit here, most of them on Facebook, actually called it wrong. Mm. She said here that he satisfied the bill conditions. conditions. Yeah. I want to see proof of that. Because as, and we can check no, with the police. No, but it's been widely reported that he satisfied the bill But he conditions. didn't, he didn't, he didn't. Have you checked with the police? I've checked even on all of this. He, uh, it won't be the everything. first time that uh, um, uh, misinformation has been put on there based on people passing comments. And I really wish we'll get to a time where when it comes to high-profile cases, such commentary is you actually get penalized somewhat for making certain remarks when it comes to Supreme Court and all of that. So Knowing you, don't the think, influence, you don't think that he said He didn't. The uh, well, the information available to me was... He was, um, it was a 500,000 um, 500, CD. Mm. He presented um, um, a paper which was supposed to, um, his list of assets, which was supposed to amount to the figure. And he never followed up on it. Either him or his lawyers, whoever is responsible, they never followed up on it. Now, if you present that and you don't do what is needful for you to get your bail, will we sit back and say he satisfied the bail, the bail conditions? Certainly not. So if we are going to... Um, um, and the whole matter with Shraj and, honestly, I mean, Supreme Court, appeal courts, Shraj is way below in terms of 
a hierarchy. The charge is on the level of the High Court. Of a high court. Yes, but it's well yeah. below the Supreme Court. So are they going to challenge the the um, the, the outcome of the Supreme Court? But if they want to... the basis of the law. The Sorry, Supreme uh, Court itself no. reviews itself. Yeah, but my name is Akusia. Akusia, yeah, The Supreme worry. Court yeah. itself... It's, it's, it's fine, but I'm saying that itself. the case it started from 2015 when he wasn't granted bail. So what has changed for us to now sit and demand since you're now on the opposite side of the table to demand that he be released on bail. No, but Knowing very well no, that... No, 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 but it's not... Um, it's, 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 it's the, uh, organizations like Amnesty International that are demanding that Shra should investigate and, and, and come out with... You know, Good. They can call for the investigation. But as it stands, all the processes required, and when it comes to the Attorney General, we know how meticulous she is. People think, oh, she needs to work harder and faster. But she'll dot all the I's, she'll cross all the T's to make sure that the right thing is done. Let's not position ourselves as champions for somebody who allegedly committed a murder. It's a sensitive issue for me personally just because of the events that transpired in 2015 and even the effect it had on the party, mm. which is now in, in, in government. Let's not politicize it unduly. Some there would say that the judiciary is not truly independent, though, because it looks as though um, the IGP, CID, they, ca they, can, they can disrespect the court order. And, you know... Um, David, anybody can say anything at this point. If you have any proof of any underhand dealings or whatever, you are well within your rights to present it and, 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 and follow um, through with it. It's important that... Gregory Afuku pursues legal remedies, mm. not based on public opinion, cuts of social media, or whatever people are saying. The right thing should be done. He was arrested in 2015. Yeah. No bail was granted. It's 2019. Issues in his case, fresh evidence could have come to light. I'm not, I'm not even privy to what the AG knows, which is well and good, but she's well within the law to do what she's doing. If Shraj and Amnesty International feel that, yes, there's something that they have or it draws certain questions, they're also well within their rights to push. However, as everything stands, uh, what it looks to me, really and truly, is due process was followed. It's a murder case, even for the family of the bereaved. I mean, it could have a whole, a whole 360 turn in their lives. It's, it's, it's really unfortunate how things are playing out. But... She knows, and I, I, I think it's about time I, I registered in law school, you know, all these things <laughs> coming up, and I have to learn all these things, but really and truly, it's well within their rights. He hasn't, the AG hasn't done anything wrong. Mm. She has a true. right to discontinue okay. and file fresh charges if need be. All right. Uh, we'll get into the next topic, which we're going to talk about. Uh, Kwame Usu, the case of uh, the former uh, Ghana Maritime Authority boss, who, um, for those of you who've been following the stories, would uh, know that there were issues about um, his uh, the money expenditures in the in terms of renovating his two bedroom house, um, the issue the case of the air conditioners, um, his hotel, various lunches that were were thrown um, for you know various amounts of uh, monies and so on. Um, I want us to get into the issue and say that is he being rewarded for um you know things that were seen in the in the public and in the press as untoward um conduct of a public officer oh you want me to go first yes okay so when it comes to the issue of mr kwame Usu, two things really um stand out for me Mm. When the court of public opinion is highly against you, based on a certain reportage or a chain of events, and you you don't you don't have you're not good at defending yourself, just push it to a professional. That's that's one thing I've learned from his situation. Find a professional, give them the facts of the matter, let them do their work for you. Two, it's always important to, in this media, um, digital media age, to leave digital footprints of your achievement wherever you work. I'm saying this because this was a man who assumed office 
in an institution, okay, in an agency that hadn't recorded profits in a very long time. Mm. Now, he, he was able to come back from that, from the hole that the agency was literally in, to record a profit in the millions. I think his first year was 66 million or so. Yeah, that's, the that's second that's year, right, yeah. the second year, so, yes, yeah. second year was 99, the third year over 100 million, which leaves a huge task for his um, successor, successor to, to actually follow. Now also, the allegations against him never proved all right there was a lot of talk oh he threw a party here he um and yes begs into question where the party was held but all those issues aside would we say that based on his work right he did a good job the issue with the um renovation mm -hmm. i remember during his very passionate press conference okay which again I wish he hadn't done. Although the, the, the facts, I had to distance the facts from his posture. And the facts were that there was a two bedroom house where, where he's actually, he actually is at, right? And he saw the need to expand because when they had guests coming in, and we know how these things work. Sometimes you go and book a hotel and you have some corporate, you know, um, concession with some of these hotels who give you a certain amount and all of that. He thought it wise to let's expand so that it becomes an asset to us. It's not for him to take with him when he's no longer in office. Yes. It's for Ghana Maritime. So he expanded, uh, make, made a three bedroom, added a library, added a basement, conference hall. Now, some of these buildings, I don't know if you've been to any, especially the old ones, okay? You see how great the ventilation is here. I was mm. actually trying to count how many air conditioners are in, your, in the space. I couldn't find any, so I'm thinking it's, it's <laughs> built into the setup, right? We have, we have, we have yes. some. <laughs> His justification for it was not based. How he communicated it for me was an issue, but the truth of the matter is if you were to keep the um, um, environment cool enough, especially for people who come in and for the um, operations of the space, then a certain number had to go in. What I will not, um, what I will not hold on to is, is, you know, we've been petty with how he said things and what, what but at the end of the day, I mean, there are people that even um, represent the country, even in the sports, um, you know, space. Yeah that have literally said things, insulted the following, you know, and people will say, oh, it's our money that is used to pay them and all those things. Let's, let's move away from that. Is he competent? He's shown he is. He's, he's been shown to turn around an organization and move it into profit. Now, the issue why he stepped down had to do with his age. He was, well, the the... Whole well, that's, six. that's one side of the argument. That was one. He, re he resigned because of pressure. Well, for, for some, it was an honorable thing to do. But again, do we neglect his, his record, okay. his achievements? Mm. Do we rubbish it based on a press conference he held to address issues of concern, which he actually had answers to? Now, he's been giving his progress or given his track record being assigned to GRE. Mm. Is, he, is he owing monies at um, Ghana Maritime Authority? Did he leave anything that would cause people to raise concerns? No. He's been known to generate things out of nothing. Okay. And GRA needs to meet its targets. Mm. GRA actually needs to extend its targets. When it comes to revenue re um, generation, up several people keep, we've said it, I, we, we so you think the appointment is entirely meritorious? I think, you see, there's, the president has made, has obviously has trust and confidence in the man, mm. looking beyond the, the issues surrounding the court of public opinion and what mm. social media said mm. of him, and looked at what he was able to achieve within a space. Okay, turning, you, uh, uh, there are companies that, there are even appointees who are struggling to turn around mm. um, 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 organizations because of legacy debts they inherited. I'll give yeah. Maslok as an example, where one of 
um, 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 Joyce's, Auntie Joyce's colleagues has been arraigned before court over with millions of dollars. Really? Yes. Okay. So we can't run away from that. So okay. if he has, I would say that, yes, it's not an easy situation to be in, but looking at the man and his achievements and disassociating him from the comments he made. Right. Okay. Yeah. His, his, his work spoke for him. Okay. And the All president right. deemed Thank him you. fit to assume that position. All right. Joyce, I could just suggest that his, his appointment is altogether <coughs> meritorious and has nothing to do with, um, uh, you know, being rewarded for doing, you know, things that were untoward that came out in the, in the press and the public. Um, he, it's been, he's been accused of using his office for personal gain and so on and so forth. But Akosia seems to distance herself from those comments and rather wants to look at his, his um, ability to perform within an office. Is it enough to appoint someone based on merit alone as opposed to the softer issues where... Um, you know, even even posturing in terms of responding to questions and so on and so forth, and then the other issues of conflict of interest and all of that. What do you? What do you well, David, thank you very much. I would personally, as an individual, not hang my integrity on anybody's feelings. I would not also defend what I consider to be the indefensible. I would say that when you look at the company's act, there is a very key fiduciary responsibility, mm -hmm. an obligation on the shoulders of any individual person who is appointed a director of any company. It is your responsibility to lead it ethically, mm. to avoid conflict of interest. It is only in Ghana where we parry away matters that border on conflict of interest as mere formalities and mere aspects of one's options and one's responsibilities to any given time or company that you work for. Remember that I come from the industry. I was in trade facilitation. I know the Ghana Maritime Authority very well and all the agencies in that ministry. I would state categorically, without any fear of contradiction, that anybody who says that whatever this gentleman did at the Ghana Maritime Authority was okay and within his purview so to do, that there was justification to the extent that he went to, that the mere fact that you raise profits in a company should suffice. I think that would be a very sad rendition for the good people of Ghana. Really? Yes, the politics notwithstanding. And that such an individual who felt that he had been able to make profits for a government institution raised from people within the trade can be made a chairman of the Ghana Revenue Authority. I think that actually makes me even more sad. Why though? Because he, do you know he that clearly you can, do knows you, how do to you know you gather revenue. Be, do you know you can be convicted? where your conflict has brought the name of the company or the brand into dispute, and that you can serve a sentence for two to five years. Do you know that? Well, you're Just because us. we don't enforce them is no justification for you to keep rewarding wrongdoing. I don't want to speak too much on this subject, and I think that the debate sometimes should be elevated to a level of professionalism, ethics, above all, a human being's personal ethics and integrity and your level of credibility. Mm. I, as an individual, will not be rewarding such an individual with a job as a chairperson of GRE, irrespective. So if I went to a government agency and I raised good money, I could spend it anyhow, abuse my office anyhow, and justify it that is because I made profits for the company. Government and statutory institutions are supposed to pay funds into government chests to support our budget. Mm. We are a country that still depends on donors for budgetary support. Such an individual should not be rewarded and elevated to any other position. I don't want to go into a nitty gritty. I know the industry very well. Uncle Joe, he, he was investigated, but no report, as far as we are concerned, has come out. Um, is this not feeding further into the perception of um, you know, corruption in the sense that uh, a report was initiated. We, years down the road, we still don't have 
the report on whether he actually did something criminal um, or fell foul of the law or not? Um, David, well, no reports. I can't speak to a report because I haven't cited it. I don't yes. have any no, privileged there, there information. Isn't one that yes, and there's been a lot that. of talk concerning that. But till we all see that report, we can't actually... Um, you can deduce and draw conclusions which might be wrong. But, you see, if merit means nothing, mm. it, it, it will really bother me because in 2016, if she's worked in that organization, in 2016, there was a deficit of 43 million Ghana cities. Mm. In 2017, that, that, that was actually overturned. If we so are to look I, at, are we that, let me, are you let me land, that let merit? me land, please. I'm saying this because if we are going to, where do we draw the line on what you do yeah. in an organization yeah. and what you are able to achieve? Okay. Yeah. If it means, if we are going to hang him on his comments and, uh, and that's alleged corruption, which hasn't been proven, then we have every right to also question why on the other side, spokesperson to John Mahama is not, is vying for president again. When in the history of this country, in his tenure, we recorded the lowest, lowest, lowest GDP. No, but Why won't we look no, at his, no, I'm saying that, okay. given the parameters she set, mm -hmm. if we are going to discard, if we are going to set the rules as, in, as, as per who we engage, they are, mm. they are CEOs, look, they are CEOs, in, in this in the world okay who have certain behaviors that could actually question whether they are even narcissists but well, we know that narcissists actually are great leaders right but <laughs> their results the result is what matters at the end of the day did he kill anybody no his comments were unfavorable I, I admitted in the beginning that I wish he had gone about it differently. Yeah. I wish he had presented the facts to you. Because when you look at the facts, you're like, whoa, this person actually could do this in this amount of time. Yeah. Why not give him mm. the opportunity? Yeah. Okay. And not in a position as CEO, because he's well over the, the age, as we all agreed. Mm -hmm. But he's in another position, GRI board chairman. A chairman is, they, they're involved in strategy. They're not yes. involved in the day-to-day -day handling. It's an advisory handling. role. But, Good. I mean, my issue here is... Do we give, do we reward, uh, because there's a perception that we're, we're dealing with here. There's a perception of using his office for personal gain, which is, which is corrupt, you know. So if that perception exists and we choose to appoint him to an important position as GRA boss, then we are feeding further into the perception that if you're in power and you have all the trump cards, right, then you can do what you like. The allegation on him, as you said, allegation, I haven't seen any documents or any, um, you know, any file mm. based on the investigations that you said had gone on to prove whether he was complicit in abusing his office for personal gain and whatnot. All I'm going to speak to is his achievements. And his achievements, so remarkable, so brilliant, okay, and in that short space of time. I, I, you know, I don't, I don't want to go back and forth on it. It's, a, it's like, I don't even want to bring in football. But we can take some players, Suarez, well, we don't, and, we and don't the stuff he does. Left, yeah. Suarez, we can, we can talk about what Suarez did to us as Ghanaians, right? But at the end of the day, will we bench him because of a few personal decisions he took? I, I think that, in his case, were yeah. obvious for all of us. Mm. When it comes to Mr. Kwame Usu, undeniably, he's competent at what he does. Mm. He's put in effort in a space where she's worked before and they consistently recorded losses. Okay. He's turned that around, he's made it profitable to a point where people are now seeing that, you know what, you actually brought life into an institution that we long thought was dead. We can't take it away from him. GRA, President deems him fit based on what he's been able to achieve. I mm. think he's done a great job. His, the power has been invested in him and I actually wish him luck. Joyce, final comments?
Well, unfortunate as their comments may appear and sound, maybe there's still time for improvement and hopefully we'll come to a level where ethics will rule in our country, in our governance. That a government spokesperson will sit here and justify such an appointment leaves a lot to be desired, but tells you that the government itself, led by President Anako Fuadu, has become a clearing agent from the cash for seats matter right through to the bust challenges. Now we hear that because you go to a government institution which is levying charges and taxes on people who trade in our waters, that it is justification that you've turned profit around and misspent it, misapplied it. You should go and do further with Ghanaian's taxes at GRE. That's welcome too. But let's face the facts. I would say that maybe she wasn't here in the run-up to the campaign. Today would have been President Mahama justifying corruption by allowing a former CEO who was sacked for misapplication and misappropriation of statutory funds to now go and head the largest government revenue agency. That is incredible. But let me just no, add that it, it, was, it will not it's, happen it's anywhere so in this that John Mahama refurbished his ladies, residence ladies, on thank you, and thank wanted thank to you. keep the house. Thank you. Sorry, and that's need, on record. I think we that need is to totally go. unfortunate we need because to go. when President Kufo was in government, he lived in his he first house yes, and they used state resources to change. Yeah, they need As a propaganda, review. we can go He yeah. refurbished yeah. a house and wanted to change. Ladies, thank you very let's, much. Let's thank you very much. Okay. All right. So thank you very much for watching and the news paper review segment of the show. We will go, we will come back with the next segment. Please stay tuned. Don't go away.